Hello, everybody. We are going to need possibly a belt or a strap for this practice. So it's the same practice as we did on Monday, but let's see how it goes. Might do it a little bit differently. Um, and it might involve using a belt or a strap. So if you want to get it ready now, you're gonna have a loop at the end. And it's not um, imperative to have a strap or a belt, you can do the practice without it, but just, just saying, if you want to get it, have it handy. And we start um, standing at the front of the mat. So for anybody who wasn't here on Monday, this sequence, I almost don't even want to say it because it's, it's really, um, I'm not teaching it in the traditional style, but it is inspired by David Svensson's um, short series of the Ashtanga sequence. So the full Ashtanga sequence takes about two hours, um, and we're going to take we're going to do a one-hour sequence. Um, and it can be very very strenuous, very very fast, or we you can take it a little bit more easy. I'm not going to teach it too fast. Um, and you do not have to come into all of the poses. And I just say, Will, my head's completely chopped off. Just check. I don't know. If, I, I don't know about everyone at home. Um, so I'm just asking you to really look after your body. So this is a sequence. If you, when if you don't take care, it can not leave leave you feeling brilliant. If, whereas if you take care, you can feel incredibly released, invigorated, and work through the whole body. Um, and I would recommend an Ujjayi breath. This is where we lightly constrict the back of the throat. Ocean breath. And this just allows a depth and a focus to the practice. So it becomes much more than a physical workout. It is a sequence of concentration. Um, and hopefully, hopefully you enjoy it. Those of you who were here on Monday night, Monday afternoon, excuse me, let's see if it feels any different the second time around. It's kind of okay, but it's not great, is it? So I'm just talking to Will because the camera's doing its, camera's got a life of its own. I think it responds to the light or something. So I hope you can see me more or less. So if you'd like to come to standing at the front of your mat, with your feet parallel and hip distance apart. And your arms by your sides. And I would close your eyes to take a few breaths here in Tadasana mountain pose to Center or to recenter if you were here for the gentle cuts. I hope you've got bare feet. And I hope you can really feel down through the soles of your feet into the floor, into the earth, into your mat. And feel the stability, the groundedness from where we start. Noticing the quality of your breath. You might already have begun that gentle contract constriction at the back of the throat, that Ujjayi breath. Ocean breath, Darth Vader breath. And if you weren't here for the first practice and if you would like to, now would be the time to ask yourself that simple question of what you need from this practice. What's brought you here? So this can be your sankalpa, your focus, your intention. And then bringing your hands together at the heart space. Surya Namaskar A, Sun Salutation A. We do this three times. Take a full breath in and sweep your arms up. And breathe out, pour yourself down. Keep your knees bent. Fingers to the floor or your shins and breathe in straight legs. Flat back. So, Sun Salutation A is a warm up. Exhale, bring yourself to plank or to bring your knees down if you need to and take an extra breath in. And then, everybody, for this first one, drop your knees and exhale slowly down over the front of your body. Keep focus and breathe in, roll your shoulders around to peel the chest up. Head comes last. And from here, curl your toes under and breathe out back to a downward dog for five breaths. So, of course, we haven't opened our hamstrings yet. So this downward dog is for that. Keep your knees bending, maybe walk your dog out in this first downward dog. 
focusing in on the breath, the length of the side body, strong arms. On the next breath in, look in between your hands and walk or step your feet forwards and come straight to a flat back. And exhale, fold in completely. Press through your feet on your breath in and come all the way up. Some people might like to take a little bit of a back bend, but not too much. Exhale, straighten hands down to the house space. And we go straight into number two, breathing in. Breathe out, fold. Breathing in, straight legs flat back. And you can either step or jump back to your plank and take a breath in. Either drop your knees or maybe you're already ready to lower yourself all the way down. Come all the way down. Release your toes. Breathing in, peel yourself up. Curl your toes under. Downward dog for five breaths. And explore, inquire into your own body. Where are you feeling this? And where can you breathe more space into the body? Are you still needing to bend your knees possibly or your legs straight now? If they're straight, can you lift up from the top of the thighs to help you lift the bottom up and to lengthen the spine? Looking in between your hands and inhaling, walk or step your feet forwards and come straight to a flat back. Exhale, fold completely. Pressing through your feet, inhale, come all the way up. Make it about the breath, exhale, hands to your heart and go straight into the third and last Surya Namaskar A, breathing in, breathing out. Breathe in flat back, straight legs and step or jump your way back to a plank. Now you have an option of doing Chaturanga Dandasana, turning into upward dog. Either drop your knees or come down like we did before. And take a breath in here. And then roll, bring your weight a little bit forwards and begin to lower so that your upper arms are parallel with the floor. And from here, flip your feet over, push yourself through the heels of your hands. So you don't want your shoulders to come lower than your elbows. And then from here, downward dog, five breaths. Please remember with these salutations, if they're too much, you come down and you do cat cow, which is excellent for the spine. And then looking in between your hands and walk, step, or maybe some of you like to jump your feet forwards and come straight to a flat back. Exhale, fold. And breathing in, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Let's take a breath in, in between, breath in and out in between the two types of Surya Namaskar. We're coming to Surya Namaskar B, Sun Salutation B. Breathing in, take your arms up and breathe out. Sit back on your chair, fingertips to the floor. Take a breath in, arms up by your ears and breathe out, come into a full forward fold. Breathing in, flat back and step or jump back to your plank. Take a breath out. Now you know the three ways of coming down now. Take a breath in. Breathe out, choose your way down. Breathe into your choice of back bend. Find your downward dog. Take your left foot down at 45 degrees and sweep your right foot forwards, firming in the lower body and then breathing in, come up for warrior one. Breathe out, hands down. Lift the back heel. Inhale to plank, exhale, come down your way, choose the back bend that you want, exhale, downward dog, right foot comes down 45 degrees and you step your left foot forwards, firming down through the lower body, inhale to warrior one, 
Exhale, hands down, lift the back heel. Back to plank, inhale. Choose your way down to the mat. Choose your back bend. And either come to downward dog or maybe you want to rest in child's pose. Five breaths. Breathing full, breathing with focus. Maybe feeling heat in the body. On the next breath in, looking in between your hands and walk, step or jump your feet forwards, looking up ahead of you. And exhale down into your chair. Inhale, lift your arms up by your ears. And exhale, push yourself up. Hands down to the heart, inhale. Exhale here, and we'll take one more. Surya Namaskar B. Inhaling, arms up. And exhaling, sit back in your chair. Inhaling, arms up by your ears, really draw the tailbone down now. And exhale into full forward fold. Inhale, flat back. And then walk or step or jump yourself back to a plank. Take a breath in. Choose your way down to the mat. Choose your back bend on the inhale. Exhale, downward dog. And this time we take the right foot down at 45 degrees first and step the left foot forwards, firming. And then inhale, come up to your warrior one. Exhale, come down to plank. Take an extra breath in. Choose your way down on the exhale. Choose your back bend on the inhale. Find your downward dog on the exhale. And take your left foot down 45 degrees and step the right foot forwards. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, come back to plank. Take an extra inhale. As you exhale, choose your way down to the mat. Inhale, roll into your back bend. And as you exhale, come either back to downward dog or to child's pose for five breaths. Stay with the breath. Stay with the breath. And then looking in between your hands and walk, step or jump your feet forwards, inhale. Exhale, sit back in your chair. Inhale, arms up by your ears. And exhale, push up. Take an inhale and reach up now, up through the fingertips. And on the exhale, bring your arms down by your sides. Take a moment to feel the body. Just noticing the quality of your breath after three sun salutation A and two B. Feel the energy. Stay with your own personal focus. And we come to Uttanasana, full forward fold. To so make sure that your feet are parallel. And you're really grounding down through the feet. And the recommendation I give here is that you really lift up from the kneecaps. So you hug the muscles to the bone. So your legs are engaged. So it's the, it's the engagement of the, front of the thigh muscles which will open out the hamstrings at the back. They're paired. So take a breath in and lift up high and exhale, come down halfway. Take another breath in and really reach to find that length in the spine. And then exhale, come all the way down and really tuck your navel to the spine and maybe up and under your diaphragm. And if you've got any lower back problems at all, you bend the knees and you come to quite a soft forward fold. If you haven't got lower back pr problems, keep your legs engaged. Maybe your hands are on your legs. Maybe you're holding onto your big toes. 
Maybe you've even slipped your hands underneath your feet. And we're going to take five breaths. With a sense that every breath in, you're looking for length in the spine. And every breath out, you're drawing yourself, even just symbolically imagining drawing yourself closer in towards your legs. Breathing space into the back body. Lifting and separating your sitting bones out behind you. Lifting from the tops of the thighs. Lovely Ujjayi breath, if that's with you. One more breath in. And on the breath out, release your hands. Inhale, bring your hands to your hips and exhale here, slightly bent in the knees. And we'll come up, straight spine, inhale. Exhale here, taking a moment to feel the body. So if you were to go to a classical Ashtanga class, and some of you may be used to that, it'd be like that. But I just am not interested in teaching like that and I can't anyway. Sorry. On the next inhale, take a step with your right foot to bring feet to parallel. And then the right foot goes out to face the right side of the, the front of the mat. Bring your hands to your hips to begin with. And then lift your arms out. And begin to reach, reach, reach to the right, lengthen the side body and then hinge into your Uttita Trikonasana triangle pose. Doesn't matter if the left hip is rocking forwards. I don't want to force you to peel it back. Really feel the space in the opening in the left side of the body. You could either look down towards the right foot or look up towards the right hand. Three more breaths, really expanding in the chest, left shoulder blade, grooving down in towards the spine. Legs engaged. One more breath in. Look down on the breath out and bend into that knee. And inhale, come all the way up and come straight to the other side. Reach, 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 reach. So your legs are engaged. The right hip might be rocking forward slightly. Five breaths. Keep spinning the chest. Keep looking up towards the top fingers or down at the front foot. The right elm, right shoulder blade might be grooving, carving in towards the spine. Lovely pose for space in the upper body and strength in the lower body. Really lovely, helps the breath as well. One more breath and all side bends are excellent for the breathing. One more breath in. And as you breathe out, look down at the front foot, bend into the knee. Breathe in to come up. Breathe out, step to the front of your mat. And take a moment to feel the body. You should already feel quite good after a teeter trick on asana. Breathing in, lifting up your right knee, taking a slightly wider stance this time, right foot to the end of the mat. Left foot comes in at about 45 degrees and exhale, bend into the knee. We're taking pass vakonasana, side angle pose. Start off with the right elbow on the knee as you find your position. Lift up the left arm, vertical to begin with, inhale. Exhale, bring it over your ear. Now here, you, if it's possible, you could bring your right hand either inside or outside the foot, it depends on you. The point of this pose is to spin the chest. So you're not looking down and curling down, you're spinning the chest. And take three more breaths here. Breathe, feel the opening in the hips, the thigh. Feel the energy right the way down um, from your back foot to the fingertips. One more breath in. Breathe out, look down at the front foot. And then breathing in, sweep yourself up and come straight to the other side. Left elbow to the knee. Make sure that left foot is straight. It's firming up through the back leg. First of all, inhale, lift your arm to vertical. Exhale, arm over the ear. Maybe take your left hand down, maybe not. And take three more breaths, really spinning the chest to the right. Firm, firm, firm through the back foot and energizing through the right fingertips. One more breath in. Breathe out, look down. 
push into that front foot to bring yourself up, inhale. Exhale, step lightly to the front of your mat. Feel the body. Next, inhale an even wider stance with the right foot. Exhale here. And take your heels out a little bit, your toes in. We're going to come into full forward fold. Any pain in the lower back, you bend your knees. Breathe in and really lift up and out of the pelvis. And then with the breath out, lead with the heart and come down halfway. Are your muscles hugging to the bones of your legs? Take a breath in, nice and long. And then fold completely. Bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Looking in between your legs and work your hands eventually so that they're in line with your feet. Three more full breaths, really lifting the sitting bones up and behind you. Lifting from the kneecaps. Drawing in on the exhalation from the navel to draw you down a bit deeper. The next inhalation, take your hands to your hips. Exhale here and soften in the knees. And then inhale, come up with a straight back. Exhale, release your hands. And we'll take Prasarita Padottanasana C. Rolling the shoulders up and back and interlacing your hands behind your back. You draw your hands past the tailbone. If this isn't possible for you, take the version we just did. And take a breath in and really lift the heart, open the heart. And then exhale, hinge again, this time bringing your arms over your head with you. Only bending in your knees if you need to. And take five breaths. Five breaths, finding space to breathe. Are you still breathing Ujjayi? Do you still have that focus? One more breath in, and on the breath out, just drop your hands to your lower back. Take them to your hips, bending slightly in the knees. Breathe and come up with a straight spine. Breathe out, step to the front of your mat. I feel the body now. I'm feeling a lot better. And we come to standing balances. We start with Padangustasana. So we hold the big toe or the knee. So if you'd like to really root down through the left foot, hug the muscles to the bone, feel rooted, almost feel as if you're growing roots down through the sole of that foot. And then start by lifting the right knee into your hand. And I want you to draw that right shoulder and hip back so you're not slunching forward, I just made up a word, slunching. I think it's a mix of crunching and slouching. And this might be absolutely plenty for you today, you stay here. If you want to come deeper, you take hold of the big toe, draw a little circle with that hip out behind you before you straighten the leg out in front of you. Because you're looking to have a straight spine and open chest. Push that big toe forwards, pull the right hip back, three more breaths. Steady the gaze, steady the breath. One more breath in, and on the breath out, just release the foot. And hold it there, hold it from your core. One more breath in, and then release. Feel the body. We take that to the other side, Padangustasana. Lovely name. Firming up through the left leg, right leg, excuse me, spreading the toes. And lifting your right knee, left knee into your hand. Just drawing that left shoulder, that left hip back. Lovely soft gaze. Either you stay here, absolutely fine or you take hold of the left big toe, draw that hip round and back behind you, and then from there straighten. Five breaths here. Breathe steady. Keep drawing the shoulder and the hip back to space for the chest and the spine's long. Slow 
soften the face. One more breath in. On the breath out, release the leg, but keep it as high as you can and take a breath in. And then release the leg down. Take a moment to feel the body. So I want to have a go at that really tricky balance with the belt, partly because it's supposed we do sitting that I really like. So I don't really like the standing version, but we can have a go. And I'll show you what I mean. First of all, let me tell you that it's absolutely possible for this pose to do a tree. You're gonna do a tree, come to the pose now, foot pressing in towards the leg, either right up or down, and that's absolutely fine. You want to try the full pose. You're bringing the right foot all the way into the left hip crease. You might want to take the belt around the foot here. Holding it with the right hand. So you take the right hand behind your back. This is only if you can't hold up. See, I can't hold on to my big toes. The belt is good, it keeps me in posture. But if you can, of course, hold on to the big toe and then lift up the left arm. If you're holding on to your big toe, you could bend forwards into a standing balance forward fold. Otherwise, stay with me for three breaths. Steady. One more breath in and then gently release yourself out of the pose. And we'll take it to the other side. So please take your choice. If you want to come to Vrakasana tree, absolutely fine. It's the same principle. It's all asymmetric hip opener, one leg balance. If you want to come with me to try this strange pose on the other side, take the belt around your left foot and bring it up into the right hip crease. Take your left arm behind you and either hold onto the belt or the foot. So you're opening that hip as much as you can but without hurting the knee. So please listen to your knees in this pose, crucial. Lift up the right arm. If you're holding the foot, you might want to bend forwards. So that what you'll feel there is your left heel will press into your lower abdomen. The massage for your internal organs. One legged standing, standing forward fold. Otherwise, three more breaths here. Stay steady, stay focused, even in the midst of quite a lot of chaos, maybe. Metaphor. Take a breath in and then release. And take a moment to focus, to stand, to feel the body, feel both feet. And come to the front of your mat. Take a breath in, arms over your head. And breathe out, fold all the way down. And breathe into straight legs, flat back. We're taking a vinyasa. Step or jump back to your flank. It's time to come all the way down to the mat straight away. And then breathe in, peel up into your cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Looking in between your hands, bring your right foot forwards. Place your left heel down. You're not walking a tightrope. We're coming back to warrior one, but for five breaths now. Pressing through your feet, inhale, come up. You can straighten the front leg to begin with. And then re-bend. Really strong and fired up through that back leg. Front knee, you don't want to fall into the middle. If you're feeling strong in the core and you've got no lower back problems, follow the front of your spine and come into a little bit of an arch, a little bit of a back bend. Three more breaths. Virabhadrasana one, warrior one. Spacious, powerful pose. Find your inner warrior. And strong core as you inhale, straighten. Exhale, come down, lift your back heel, find your plank. 
Take a breath in your plank, come all the way down. Always drop your knees if you need to. Breathing in to find your back bend. Find your downward dog. And place the right heel down 45 degrees as you step your left foot forwards. Take time to align your feet along tram tracks, not a tight rope. And then breathe in, come all the way up. And straighten that front leg. This is to straighten up the pelvis, squaring it with the end of the mat. Come to your five breaths. Feel the pose from the inside. How do you want to express? Do you want to take a back bend? Do you want to be a little bit more humble? How's your energy this afternoon? If my hair's looking weird, it's because we'll cut it. Which is incredibly brave of him and me. But I think he did a pretty good job. He just won't let me cut his. And then inhaling, straightening, exhale, hands come down, lift the back heel, slide your foot back to plank. Take a breath in your plank. Choose your way down to the mat. Notice I'm dropping my knees. Please listen to your body. Inhale to your little cobra. Exhale, downward dog for warrior two this time. On the next inhale, step your right foot forwards. Bring your left heel down. This alignment is front heel to back in step. So you are aligned along one line. And then with the left arm, windmill yourself up. Inhale, exhale, come down to that front knee. And check the alignment here. Your knee should be tracking over your ankle to your big toe, um, your middle, second toe, excuse me. And I really like this instruction to drop the tailbone and to lift the pubic bones. So you're looking for space across the front of the pelvis. The other thing to look out for is your right buttock and the outer thigh, rather than sticking them out, tuck them under, tuck them under. This will help you engage the core and see if you can find softness in the upper body. One more inhale. And on the exhale, windmill yourself down to a lunge and then a plank. Find your way down to the mat. Inhale to a little back bend. Exhale, downward dog. And step your left foot forwards, your right heel comes down. Windmill the right arm up. And find your warrior two. Heel to instep. Sometimes it's really important to release tension in the upper body as well as aligning in the lower body. So remember the tailbone comes down, pubic bone lifts, you tuck under the buttock and the outer thigh. Three more breaths in your warrior two, soft gaze over the front fingers. Strong back leg. One more breath in and breathe out and then windmill yourself down, lift the back heel. And now just come to a downward dog for five breaths. If you need to rest in child's pose, please do. And we're coming down to the mat for a few seated poses. So come back to your breath, come back to your intention. Most importantly, find your focus. And then looking in between your hands, walk, step or jump your feet forwards to come to sitting. Mm, lovely. So it's important here to look after your lower back again. So if you need to sit up on something, please do. We're going to start with a Paschimottanasana, a seated forward fold. And I think we'll miss out the vinyasas today in between. I think we'll just focus on the poses because I think we're warm enough. I hope you agree with me. If you're longing for more vinyasas, maybe you can fit them in. But I want to slow down the teaching a bit. So let's find the sitting bones. If your legs are straight and you can sit up with a straight spine, draw your toes towards you. Otherwise your knees are bent and you're leaning forwards. And then breathing and lift both arms up, really find length. And then with the heart, breathe out and come down about halfway. 
Take another breath in and reach, reach, reach. And then breathe out, come all the way. So it may be that your hands are down by the legs. Maybe you're able to hold onto your feet. I cross my hands at the wrists. And now, wherever you are, five breaths. Slow it down now. Slow it down. <laughs> Every inhalation, you're finding length. Length in the spine out through the top of your head. You can even wriggle around a bit. And every exhale, you draw your navel to the spine. And maybe, maybe you come a little bit deeper. But it's not the point. We're not forcing anything. In Ashtanga, it feels like we are. We have to remind ourselves that we're not. Stay soft, stay focused. Two more breaths. One more breath. And then gently release. And instead of a vinyasa, Will reminded me that we can do this. You make fists or palms down and simply push your hands to lift your bottom off the floor. I'm not even trying to lift the left of my leg, rest of my legs. I'm just lift, lift, lift to hang a moment. And then release down. And we're going to come to the pose that we tried in a balance where we had the belt. A very lovely pose, I think, but it's worth slowing down with. So let's not forget that Ashtanga was invented for young athletic boys. And maybe there are some young athletic boys amongst you, but I'm suspecting there aren't very many. But the sequence is still a good one. So we need to bring your right foot and either bring it into the thigh of the left leg or if you're able to again just like we did on the in the standing pose bring the foot right into the gro into the left hip crease and this is where you might take the belt around the foot and to begin with hold the belt with the left hand whether, wherever your foot is, the left leg is engaged and you're really pulling your toes towards you. Straight spine and then breathe and lift up with the right arm. Sweep the arm around behind you to either hold onto the foot or the belt. It's actually easier here to have more purchase, I find it, than balancing, obviously, because we're resting on the floor. So take your time to... The lovely thing about this pose is it's great for the shoulders as well and the upper body. Take your time to find the grasp you want on that foot. And then breathe in, lift up the left arm. Find length and then come forwards. Maybe you hold the foot, maybe you don't. And now you have a chance of feeling that, at least I do, feeling the right heel pressing into my lower abdomen on the left side. Real massage. And my right knee is lowering to the side. It might be for you, it might be not. Please don't tolerate pain in the knee. And we'll take three more breaths. Find your way. Ease your way, soften in the skin. Every inhale, you're finding length in the spine. Every exhale, you draw deeper forwards. And we'll gently release. I wonder how, I'd love to know how you found that. Let's come out. Release the leg. Maybe give your knee a little bit of a rub. I really like that. And then either bring your left foot into the thigh or take the belt around the foot <clears throat> and bring the foot right into the hip crease. Be loving with your knees, please. And then if you're able to, if your right leg is straight, draw the toes towards you. And you're beginning by holding the belt with your right hand, just to draw the foot in. Lift up the left arm and sweep it around to hold on to either the, the belt or the foot. See, this might be a moment where you can adjust a little bit to pull the foot a little bit more in. And then breathe in, lift up through the right arm, find that length. 
and then come forwards, holding the foot or not. So we all have different bodies, we all have different level of experience or commitment to yoga practice. And do you know what? It's a cliche, but every time any of us come to the mat, we're coming to the mat for the first time. So true, so true. This is not about making progress in terms of achievement. The progress to be made is in the way you approach the practice and the level of awareness you have in the practice. That is what it's about. And that is what translates off the mat, not the fact you can curl yourself into a pretzel. It's not really going to save the world. At least not in my books. So how many breaths have we been here? Let's take two more full breaths. And then gently come out. And do you know what I feel like doing a vinyasa? So if you don't want to join me, bring your hands down beside you, lift yourself up for a few breaths. Or come to all fours and take a few cat cow movements. Or roll over, flip yourself into plank, bring yourself down to the mat. Find your, either your upward dog or your cobra. It feels really good now. Find your downward dog. Stretch out for a breath or two. And then step or jump your feet in for another seated pose. And we'll miss out Marichyasana A and come straight to Marichyasana C because it's a twist and we haven't done a lot of twisting. So if you'd like to bring your right foot in about level with the, the knee or a bit further in, that's fine but it's about a fist away from your thigh. And taking your left elbow around the knee. There are more advanced versions of this. You might want to take the upper arm. That's the version I'll do. Some people will be able to bind. I'm not even gonna try and do that today. I used to be able to do it. So choosing where you want the left arm, your right hand comes behind you. And take a moment to shift around so that you feel your belly coming round over that right thigh. Left leg is engaged. And you're pressing a little bit into the right foot, pressing a little bit into the right hand. And then breathe in, find length. And then breathe out, find if there's any room for movement into a little twist. Wonderful massage for your abdominal organs. And you can use your eyes to bring you further round over that right shoulder. And let's not be too static. I think twists are great to just explore a range of movement here. Two more breaths. Are you breathing, Ujjayi? One more breath. Exhale, come back to the front. And we'll take that straight to the other side. Left knee bent. Either take your right elbow to hug in the knee Swing the right arm around to press the upper arm against the outside. Take your left hand behind you. A little bit of a lever with the left foot and the left hand. Belly, torso coming round over that thigh. And then breathe in, find length. And then breathe out, find a little twist. Or a big twist. Right leg is engaged. And can you find room to breathe here? Can you find spaciousness? How is your breath? One more breath in. And then breathe that back to the front. See, I must have taught it a lot faster on Monday because we got through more of the sequence. The other body. Take your hands down by your sides. Push down to just lift yourself off the floor. Obviously your heels are down, maybe your lower legs. Hang here for a moment and then release. And we're gonna come straight into half boat. Three to five breaths. Make it about the abdomen, the side waist, not about your throat and your jaw and your eyes. 
feel the stability in your boat. One more breath in. On the breath out, cross your ankles, press through the hands again to lift up. And we'll come to another. You have a choice of legs, four legs parallel with the floor, or you might want to take your legs long. I'm not going to today. I'm even holding my legs, I'm listening to my body. Lovely open chest. Remember I am on a silent writing retreat. This is really good right in the middle of it. I've got three hours seminar after this. And I'm biting my nails to know whether my writing be read out or not and I really doubt it will. One more breath in. Breathe out, cross the legs, press yourself up. Take a breath in here. Breathe out, come down. And let's take one last one of your choice. I'm still going to come back to that version. This allows me to have a nice straighter spine. Still good, it's just taking a lot of the stress off. You listen to your body. Writing and yoga go really well together, I find. Kind of the same philosophy. One more breath in. And then breathe out, press down. And I am going to take a vinyasa. You can join me, or you can come to all fours and take cat cow, or you can rest. Come down to the mat your way. Find your back bend. Find your downward dog. Take a breath in your downward dog. And then jump or step your feet forwards for. Add a Konasana. So the the um, soles of your feet are together. If you're absolutely scrunched over, sit yourself up on something. And bring your hands behind you anyway. And lift yourself up. So I've taken my bottom off the floor. Pressing the heels together and then settling down in front of the sitting bones a little bit. And coming around to hold your feet. Or take your thumbs inside the feet and open your feet like a book. In fact, that's what I'll do. Either way, you really press the heels of the feet together and you can use your elbows to press the legs apart. And we're going to take five breaths. But I want the emphasis to be on pushing down through the sitting bones and lifting up through the open chest and the top of your head. It's lovely, lovely room to breathe here. Lovely room to breathe. Stay with it, stay steady, really rooting down. One more breath in and then breathe out, soften. Bring your knees together, give yourself a little bit of a hug. We'll come to Upavista Konasana, wide angled forward fold. So again, if you can see me, again, maybe sit up on something or lift yourself up to replace yourself down. Really finding the sitting bones. Bring your toes towards you. If you have any lower back pain, bend the knees. Press the thigh bones down and round. And I take a breath in, lovely, big and spacious. And breathe out, come forwards as far as works for you. If you can, you slide your hands down to your feet, but not necessarily. And every breath in, you find that length and that open chest. And every breath out, maybe you pull yourself a little bit further down, but not necessarily. Make it about the breath. Make it about the breath. Slowing the breath down, maybe. One more full breath in and then a long breath out very very gently 
bringing yourself up, taking a moment to feel the body, bring your knees in, and come to lying on your back. And what we'll do is take one, just one back bend today, one bridge, a variation on a shoulder stand, and then we'll come down to very quick fish and relaxation. So take a moment to settle onto your back body. Maybe having a little bit of a roll around. And bringing your feet so they're sitting bone distance apart, heels pretty close to your buttocks. And maybe you can hold onto your ankles or maybe you just want to touch your heels with your fingers. Take a breath in and then on the breath out, push yourself up into a version of bridge. So you're really rolling the upper arms and shoulders under, scrunching your shoulder blades together. And keeping your thighs parallel, your knees parallel, push through your feet and see how full a bridge you can make. We're only taking one, remember? Remember a little orange can fit in your throat. And not bringing your chin into your chest. Three more full breaths. Bring the breath all the way up to the top. Strong legs. Lovely open front body. One more breath in. And then gently release your shoulders and come down bone by bone, bone by bone. Take a moment to feel, bring your knees into your chest. And actually I would like us to take a simple forward fold. So just rolling over, bringing yourself up again. Legs are extended out in front of you. Let's do this quite briefly. Find the sitting bones, bending your knees if you need to, breathe in. It's exactly the same as the Paschimottanasana we did before. This time, breathe out all the way down. And take five full breaths. Use your exhalations to explore the surrender of this pose. To explore the letting go. Explore the opening in the back body. Two more breaths. And very gently coming up and choose what kind of shoulder stand is best for you. I keep saying in these classes, it's not appropriate for me to teach full shoulder stand to people who haven't done it before. It's just not safe. Neck is very, very vulnerable part of the body. If you've not done shoulder stand before, all I want you to do is come and take your legs up the wall like that. I'm not against the wall because these things will fall on me, but take yourself right up against the wall and breathe here. This is just a, a rest for the legs and for the lymph and the blood. Or... Take a half shoulder stand. If you're gonna take shoulder stand, absolutely vital that you don't move your head from side to side. Lift yourself halfway. Take your hands to your lower back. Legs at about 45 degrees, that's already excellent. Settle here. I'm not gonna show you any more than this. If you know the full pose and you want to practice it, then go ahead with your own um, responsibility for your neck. Whichever version you're in, this is a lovely pose to really slow the breath down. Slow the breath down. If you know your practice and you are in a full Shabangasana, full shoulder stand, you could come into Halasana, plow pose. But only, only if you know exactly what I mean by that. Breathe and observe and breathe and observe. Slow. 
slow it down. And then very gently, you're going to come out. If you're against the wall, just stay where you are until relaxation, or you could even end your practice relaxing there. If you're, if you're not against the wall, to bend your knees in towards you and roll up, bringing your head with you. Please don't keep your head down and then drape yourself over your knees just for a couple of breaths. And then taking your hands underneath your buttocks, coming down on your forearms. So also with your feet together, all your legs can be long. And we'll end with a fish. So you press into your forearms to inflate the chest, really draw the shoulder blades together. Chin should be into the chest unless you know that your neck is fine to hold the head back. Opening out the throat. And take a few breaths here, really lifting. Breathing free. Steady breath. And then gently, 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 chin into your chest. It's time to come down for relaxation. Like I said, if your legs are up against the wall, you can stay there to relax or bring your knees into your chest and lie flat on the floor. You might want to take a little roll around, anything that you know you need. I'm going to have to leave you in relaxation to go and prepare for my writing thing, but um, I hope this... Well, I'd be very in interested to know from you how this practice has been. I'm not receiving emails, but you could, re you could email willmed at gmail.com. And we'll see how we get on tomorrow if we do the same thing or if you suggest that it's not working for you. I'm quite happy to adapt. Please take a 10 minute relaxation if you're able to, if you haven't got people demanding your time. And you can start your relaxation by reminding yourself of your sankalpa, of your intention, what brought you to the mat. Notice the quality of the breath now, leaving behind any ujjayi breath. And allowing yourself to simply observe the body. As you drop fully with the force of gravity, deeply resting. Thank you so much for practicing with me, really. And I hope you have a good evening. I'll be back tomorrow at the same time. We'll all be here at seven in the morning for meditation and at 1.30 for lunchtime relaxation. Good night.